right side. Very, very stingy. That number one ranked defense for the Rodgers hit by Bobby Rhodes. And they're going to place him down seven yards from the goal line. And it's going to be third down, and they will need about three. Good play calling, good mix. 11 running plays, five passing plays. You think maybe option here, Ron, or some type of fade route to the wide receivers. Option or fade. Or Joe Hamilton running the football. Third and three. Hamilton steps it up, gets it open at the five. For the third first and goal, Georgia Tech. Nothing's open. He's going to run. He doesn't want to take the sack. Mike, that was Craig Page, the center, who literally grabbed his jersey and said, get on out of here. Ron, I see a lot more of that. They used to call that a lot of help in the runner, but you don't see that called much anymore. First and goal. This is the 18th play of the drive. Over the Touchdown, Philip Rogers. about whether Georgia Tech could play with Florida State. I think they've just been erased on that opening drive. Chambers knocks home the extra point. We only have five minutes and 33 seconds left to play in the opening quarter. It started at the 20-yard line, and Philip Rogers takes it in. Georgia Tech, very impressive. You didn't dial 10 10 3 2, 1. I admit it, Oscar. Sometimes I forget. I told you dial 10 10 3 2 1 to save money. 50% when you talk over 20 minutes. I know, I saw my phone bill, and those 10 10 3 2 1 calls were much cheaper. And it's so easy. I know. So from now on, you'll always dial 10 10 3 2 1 first, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I learned my lesson. Pretty good advice, huh? Maybe I should be the trainer. <sighs> Who doesn't want to save 50%? I can help you plan ahead. And make sure you have money for things like the kids' education. That's fantastic. But I was thinking about starting my own business. As a matter of fact, that's part of the plan, too. Now, here's the best part. Guaranteed income for you and Meg to retire in style. AXA. Dynamic vision. Equitable. A trusted resource. Call us. Equitable is a member of the global AXA group. If you were to take away all the luxury cars on this road, priced above $30,000, without such luxuries as Bose CD audio system, leather seats, and a satellite-linked navigation system, what you'd have left would be the new 225-horsepower Acura TL and one very empty road on which to enjoy it. The new TL from Acura. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Purina One, second to none. And by the new 1999 TL, luxury, performance, pick two. Now, beautiful end of the day here in Atlanta, Georgia, seven to nothing. The Tech fans think that it is absolutely gorgeous. 18 plays, 80 yards, nine minutes and 26 seconds. And Rodgers, Philip Rodgers, two-yard run, nice leap over the top. He had eight carries for 23 yards on the drive. Nice design drive. I mean, they hit him every way you could possibly hit Florida State's defense. Rodney Williams to kick it off for the Yellow Jackets. Three yards deep, and the Bernie's Poles will return it. Not going to make it to the 20-yard line. It's covered up by Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets at the 17, and that's Chris Young who makes the stop. 
So there's a break in the action. Five minutes, 23 seconds to play in this first period. Georgia Tech, seven. Florida State, nothing. We'll be right back. Calza, I'd like to get my hands on her. Oh, yeah, I'd love to put her in drive. Say hello to the Blank Road Dream. Coming to a track near you. Thanks, and enjoy. I should have listened to my mother. When you're lost, the Accurate TL can help. Destination on the left. Maybe a place is still open. No. Yes, there. You're kidding. When a craving strikes, the TL can help. When something comes between you and your destination, Hospital detour. The TL will get you there. Keep right. Introducing the new TL with the satellite linked navigation system from Acura. Leisure suits, go go boots, feather hat, fat cat, hippie chick, patch with turf, disco doodle, t shirt, shark skin, slacks, gun in sacks, batten leather, boa feathers, hip mother, dough, juggers, brown shoe, ribbon, moves, on the main lingerie, saddle shoes. At the Attic Vintage Clothing Store in Las Vegas, the only thing that's out of style is using American Express. So bring your Visa card. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. At Blank Road, we don't do everything well. Fortunately, beer is something we do do well. Ice hops, thanks, and enjoy. BYU's offense has more balance than ever. They look to run behind tough Ronnie Jenkins. Thursday game night at 7.30, San Diego State versus BYU at 8, Thursday on ESPN. So we're about to see Florida State on offense for the first time tonight, following an opening 18-play drive by Georgia Tech. Winky will open up in the shotgun for the Seminoles. Jeff Cheney, right side, 5 and now 10 yards or close to it. Almost a first down. They'll say his knee touched at the 27 and a half yard line. Offensively, this is the way the Seminole scrimmage. Winky at quarterback. Lamar Glenn is the fullback, and Jeff Cheney, who you just saw, gets the start at tailback. Dugans and Peter Warwick, the wide receivers. Myron Jackson, the tight end. In the offensive front, Brandon, Whitaker, Thomas, Carmichael, and Carlos Thomas. And Whitaker probably is the man who has come on as strong as anybody for Florida State on that offensive line. Jason, a junior out of Panama City. You can see as they stretch the chain out, he misses the first down by just a few inches. Winky with 14 touchdowns and six interceptions all in that one afternoon at North Carolina State. What's the difference, Mike, in him then and now? I think they're protecting him a little bit more, Ron. They're, they're doing a little bit more play action passes. They've cut back their offense a little bit, but they're running the ball more. And that's the fear of Randy Epsil, the defensive coordinator. If they get a running game going, look out. 160 attempts without an interception. He goes straight ahead with the carry, and at 6'5", 225, Tarpon will make the tackle, but it is a Florida State first down. Defensively for Georgia Tech, Stimson, Grantham, Watson, and Tarpon, who just made the tackle. The linebackers, Miller in the middle, along with Robertson on the outside, and Delantre Cameron. And the quarterbacks, they'll be busy tonight. Bostic and Clark and Tillman and Caldwell are the safeties. They got their hands full this evening against Dugans, Lavernius Coles, Peter Warwick. Warwick on the flat. Loses his footing, regains it. Out across the 40, and he'll take it to the 41. 11 yards in the play. You can't miss tackles on Peter Warwick. Number one, Jamar Clark, who played with Peter Warwick in high school. Peter Warwick was the quarterback. Jamar was the wide receiver. He's looking forward to this uh, game. He misses the first tackle. He gets a chance to make on his former high school teammate. You can see Dugans came back in and cracked on the linebacker to give him a little protection as they circled him. Winky under pressure. He's going to be sacked for the first time tonight. It's Tarquin. And it was Stimson who actually rushed him up into his teammates' grasp. Nate Stimson and Jesse Tarquin. 
coming from outside, getting pressure, beating the block of the tight end. Number 56, Nate Stimson, first to arrive. Here's Jesse Tarplin working against number 76, Ross Brannon, who's from Georgia. It was a tight end in high school. They moved him to tackle. Coming home to play. Colts checks into the ball game at wide receiver, number seven, a junior out of Jacksonville. He's at the bottom of your screen. Winky keeps it on the ground. Cheney, big opening up the middle, breaks it clear, and takes it across midfield down to the 49. One of the really good stories on this Florida State team, he worked for Mickey Andrews last year as a defensive back, has gotten himself in better shape, and has really come out as a running back for them. He really has. They had some injuries at the running back position. Jeff Cheney moved over. He's provided a spark for the offense of Mark Richt. There's Travis Miner waiting to who's waiting to get in this football game. He's healthy and will play tonight. Well, Tarplin thought that uh, there was movement on the left <laughs> side of the line, and he walked over and hit Myron Jackson. And now you see him applauding, so undoubtedly the officials agree with him. Dead ball. False star. Ron, this is not a good sign for Georgia Tech defensively because Florida State now is running the football, having some success running the football. If they can run it successfully, they're going to put a lot of points on the board tonight because that opens a passing game, and then you have to try to get seven people to stop the run, and you can't play four against those wide receivers that Florida State has. Well, both teams now, uh, Georgia Tech on that opening 18-play drive, twice their lineman move. Now Florida State, instead of a third and short, third down and about five and a half or six. Safety blitz is on pass, complete, and ex Lavernius Coles. That is enough for the Florida State first down as Jason Bostic is there to make the tackle. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Well, Ron, remember I started the game by talking about the one individual goal that the Florida State defense has. Well, Georgia Tech has a few of their own. Number one, prevent the offense from scoring, and that's a big issue if you're going to be playing Florida State. <laughs> Secondly, create turnovers, and we know what they've done the last five games in a row, created a turnover and scored a touchdown, and finally get off the field after third down. Big test for them right here, Ron. See a safety blitz coming, Ron. Chris Winkie's going to check off. Well, he could see him creeping up. He pitches it back, and Cheney going to be hit at the line of scrimmage and knocked down, and that's Delontre Cameron, who was right there to deny him, and it's going to be second down and long for the state. Ron, what Chris Winkie saw on that play was the safety. Traveris Tillman moving up, and he thought it was going to be a safety blitz. Now he checks off, but all of a sudden the safety backs off, so they baited him into this call, and they moved the defensive lineman to the tight end side, so they were in good shape. They baited him into that call and stopped him. Travis Miner has come into the ballgame. The sophomore out of Baton Rouge, number 23. He's been fighting injuries this year. And as we mentioned, Cheney has taken over for him. Quick over the middle, and he, is it complete? They say incomplete. Peter Warren trying to come back and grab it up before it hit the turf. Clark was right there with him, though. The reason that play was not a completion, Chris Winkie, the defensive tackles of Georgia Tech exploded and tried and then got in the face of Chris Winkie. Let's see. Now that ball's out. Good call. But good pressure up inside. You see, he has no place to step. He has no place to follow through with the football. Third down. Florida State needs to take it to the Georgia Tech 34. Here comes a blitz for the outside. Nicely picked up at first in the pass. And that's Morgan. And Robert Morgan will have the first down plus about seven more yards. Good for 16. Well, Travis Miner made a great block to save Chris Winky to get that football off. Jerry Caldwell, the safety, was coming on a blitz, and you're going to see him coming on the outside. There's the block by Travis Miner that just gives him enough time. He skates to the right and hits Robert Morgan for the first down. Well, it was Chris Edwards, number five, who was all over the ankles of Winky, and he still was able to get the pass away. This is the 10th play of the Florida State drive. Play action. Looking, runs into the arms of the defender. Ball is loose. And it appears that Florida State got it on the rebound after Georgia Tech should have recovered it. Well, Ron, Nate Stimson, who transferred from Miami, Florida, 
to Georgia Tech. He's, he's been against Florida State before in that Miami-Florida State rivalry. He transferred here as a linebacker. He makes the play on Chris Winkie. The ball is fumbled. And then uh, just the... Uh, Everybody trying to get it. Well, we know Georgia Tech with an NCAA record. They've returned a fumble for a touchdown in their last five games, which is really an incredible feat. And they came close to having one there. They've been a big play defensive team, but like you said, they gave up 600 yards. And like I said, they still won the ball game. You have to make big plays. Winkie running for his life. Goes long and incomplete. Morgan is the guy that he wanted. For years, when you watch Florida State, their quarterbacks will hang that football up against the corners of everybody they play, and their wide receivers will go up and jump up for them, and, but this time, Robert Morgan couldn't get above Jason Bostic for the completion. Well, you're right. In watching video of that uh, Miami game played earlier, Peter Warwick on their first touchdown, it's a ball that either should have been incomplete or intercepted. He just went in front and over the defensive back, caught it, and scored. It's just like a jump ball in basketball. They work, they do this better than in the underthrown football. They'll come back and make that underthrown catch every time. Well, they got a big task here. Third down and many. Winky deep over the middle, got him wide open. Flag is down. But it is Menace, Marvin Menace, a sophomore out of Miami. And this flag is thrown here on the near sideline. Pass is good for 22 yards. I think they felt like, and I think the call is going to be on Travis Miner, that he wasn't set. That there was some movement in the backfield. Well, we have only 18 seconds left in the opening quarter. This is going fast. Well, when you have an 18 play drive by Georgia Tech to start the game, and E, how many is this in this drive for uh, for Georgia, uh, for uh, Florida State? This is 12 plays for them. So we mark off the five yards, and it's now going to be a third down and 26 for the Seminoles. shorter ball because they are such great athletes. Yeah, and Chris Winkie made that play, Ron, because he skated to the right to find an open throwing lane, and he hit Peter Warwick. Janikowski knocks home the extra point, and with that, we are at the end of the first quarter, so let's take a break. And our score as we head to the second 15 minutes of play, it is Georgia Tech 7 with Florida State answering 7. Back with the second quarter after we pause for this. If you were to take away all the luxury cars on this road, priced above $30,000, without such luxuries as Bose CD audio system, leather seats, and a satellite-linked navigation system, what you'd have left would be the new 225-horsepower Acura TL and one very empty road on which to enjoy it. The new TL from Acura. I see trees of green, red roses too, I see them blue for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Fortunately, there's Nasonex nasal spray. An effective nasal allergy prescription medicine taken once a day that relieves sneezing, itchy runny nose, and congestion, indoors and out. Now that's wonderful. Nasonex. What good days are like 
every day. The most common side effects were headache, viral infections, sore throat, nosebleeds, and coughing. Need brakes? Come to Midas for a break on brakes. Now just $69.95 after rebate. You'll get our standard brake service and our lifetime guarantee. Midas is $69.95 brakes. It's worth stopping for. So, you thought you knew everything about the Sicilian, huh? Well, I got news for you. Now it's in a whole nother league. This is the Supreme Sicilian. This is Ken Griffey giving a baseball a facial. This is a 300-pound gator turning you into a wallet. This is enough basil, oregano, and garlic in the crust to drop your carcass to the canvas. This is enough toppings to draw a flag for piling on. This is the Supreme Sicilian Pizza. Right now, just $8.99. But hurry, brother. Soon this deal's gonna be going, going, gone. Pizza Hut, the best pizzas under one roof. Whenever car batteries are put to the test, America's most trusted lives up to its name. Die Hard. What's under your hood? George O'Leary, the Irishman who was happy for a while in that first quarter, but his team scored first that Florida State has just come back. Look at this drive. 12 plays, 82 yards, 533 off the clock. And in case you joined us late, Georgia Tech opened the game with an 18-play, 80-yard drive. And two possession first quarter. Really, really unusual. Joe Burns. Boy, he gets hit hard, as you can hear the pads back out to the 20-yard line. But our full college lineup next week on ESPN Game Day at 11 Eastern, followed by our noon Big Ten games. Michigan versus Minnesota on ESPN and Northwestern Michigan State on ESPN2. In the evening, Boston College in Miami on the Deuce. North Carolina, Florida State, and then Wyoming at TCU finishes off a busy day on ESPN and ESPN2. Georgia Tech on first down. Got his pass and his man open and Des White ball was underthrown. And let's check it again with Adrian Carson. Adrian Ron has promised update on Joe Hamilton. He has taken quite a few shots here already. To that end, they retaped his right knee. And if you keep an eye on him, as he goes back to pass now, or even in draw situations, he is taking shorter steps. He's, the, the steps are not as long and as, uh, as wide as they were in the first quarter, trying to keep more stability underneath his body. Adrian needs four of six for 26 yards throwing in the game, and we'll watch him in his setup for delivery. First man through, and that's going to be Wilder. And there's not much there, all of a sudden, third down and 10. Run in the first drives, both first drives, both excellent, but I, I'm, I made the observation and it felt like Georgia Tech had to work for everything they get but it was easier for Florida State so that that doesn't bode well for Georgia Tech in my feeling of those first drives now you make some adjustments now Bobby Bowden and Mickey Andrews make some adjustments to this option and what Avery was talking about on Joe Hamilton under threw that ball to Des White I don't think he followed through so maybe his knees bothering him more than we think third down we're going to call it eight four on third down conversions tonight for the Yellow Jackets. And with one second left on the play clock, Hamilton has to call a timeout, so we'll take it with him. 14 minutes until halftime. It is Georgia Tech 7, Florida State 7. During the recent flooding in the south side, residents and business owners didn't care who was responsible for maintaining adequate stormwater facilities. They simply wanted someone to solve the problem. As a homeowner and owner of a small business myself, I understand the frustration of getting excuses instead of solutions. As your county commissioner, I will take responsibility to see that things get done. Nip in the air. Changing leaves can only mean one thing. It's football season! It's also home heating season at Locks Heating and Air Conditioning, your local Lennox dealer. I have the dish, the big street, the recliner. He also has a reliable, high-efficiency Lennox heat pump. Yep, this season this is the best seat in the house, baby. And thanks to Locks Heating and Air Conditioning, it's also the warmest. 
Lennox. One less thing to worry about. And Sunday Night Football, Bills against Panthers. Was there ever any buffalo in Buffalo? What? Did any actual buffalo ever roam in Buffalo? What's your point? In the olden times, yes. Olden times? Who's talking about olden times? A long time ago, the team was named after that rodeo guy, you stoop. Wild Bill Hickok. Oh, no. Wild Bill Hickok. What am I, a rodeo scholar? His name was Wild Bill. ESPN Sunday Night Football, the Bills against the Panthers. Well, everyone is a buzz here in Atlanta. Halloween a week away, and mom and child cheering for the Yellow Jackets and hoping Joe Hamilton and company can pick up this first down. Third down, about eight and a half, actually. From the shotgun. Gets it away, got it complete, and if they give him a good spot, he'll have the first down. And yes, just across the 30, that's Kelly Campbell. What nice tackle by Troy Saunders, number four, on Kelly Campbell, the freshman. Hamilton got hit just as he delivered that one, didn't he? Joe Hamilton waits for Kelly Campbell to open on an underneath route. A nice stretch out by Troy Saunders, maybe stopping that first down. It's going to be close. Excellent effort by Troy Saunders. Well, let's see if it paid off. Hey, from where this one has been spotted, it isn't. No. Yeah, it is going to be just by the nose of the football. Ron, we. We need to keep watching now. Adrian Carson talked about the new tape job for Joe Hamilton. Whether they're going to use him on option plays here, whether they pull off of the option game because they don't want him to take any hits. We'll soon find out here. Tied at seven. About to go into 13 minutes until halftime. Wilder's going to take it for a couple, maybe three yards. Allen, one of the first guys, also Rhodes, one of the middle linebackers. Now, if he can't run the option or cannot be effective running the option because of the knee, talk about a percentage of, of taking away from this man's offense. Oh, it takes away quite a bit because they had so much success for option plays early in the first quarter in the ball game, and that set up their score. They'll have to put him back in the shotgun on passes. is the man who messed up the play. First time I've seen that that year. This year, Mike, counter Trey, and they were going to hand it off on a reverse. Yeah, a nice little wrinkle off the counter Trey, but when you run against Torres Tate, <laughs> you don't have much time for tricks, and, and you don't have much time for delays because Tony Bryant just works up the field, hits Joe Burns, ball comes loose, and Georgia Tech's very fortunate to recover that football. When you play against a quick defense, so you can't take a lot of time trying to set something up. Well, I'll tell you what, Tony Bryant has already had what would be a pretty good ball game for a lot of people, and we're just early in the second quarter. He has been outstanding so far this evening. Florida State creeping up all over the place. Here comes the blitz. Hamilton is not going to be able to get away. He is tackled at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down as Jerry Johnson got him. And for the first time this evening, we will see Georgia Tech have to pump the football. But I also would remind you that this young man, Rodney Williams, is a weapon. Uh, he's an outstanding punter. Dee Feaster is the deep man for Florida State. Low pass gets a driving spiral away. Feaster all the way back to the 18 yard line. Well, the crowd didn't like it, and it was very close to a block in the back. Holloman makes the tackle. Let's take a break. State Farm presents Rules of the Game. We're talking about tripping. In this play, the left guard intentionally extends his leg to trip the opponent. What is the penalty? What if your car slips off the road in slippery rock? Or you need the name of a mechanic in Mechanicsville? 
Well, if your car is insured by State Farm, just look up the local State Farm agent. Almost anywhere you travel, whether it's a big metropolis or just a little one, a good neighbor is always nearby to help. So if your car gets stolen in Thief River Falls, or you have some trouble in paradise, hey, don't worry about it. State Farm is there. We're talking about tripping. In this play, the left guard extends his leg to trip the opponent. The penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Introducing the all-new Grand Am GT. Its solid form design provides a stronger body structure, so you can have the ride of your life with fewer vibrations. Excitement, well-built. The all-new Grand Am GT by Pontiac. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. And by the all-new Grand Am with solid form design. It's excitement, well-built from Pontiac. Some of the capacity crowd here at Bobby Dodge Stadium tonight. As Florida State comes out winky on the opening drive, 4 of 6, 81 yards, and the touchdown to Warren. Let's check in again with Larry Beal. Larry? All right, Ron. LSU and Mississippi State. Tigers struggling, having lost three in a row. Kevin Falk. Now LSU's all-time leading rusher. 28 to nothing, LSU. Tell you something. The history is holding true. Jackie Sherrill was 1-8 and eight against LSU going into that football game. Well, they, they, they don't throw the ball very well in Mississippi State, and that has been everybody's what everybody's done against LSU. They're a running team, and LSU fits a running team a little bit better. On second down, Travis Miner going to be tackled and knocked down hard after a gain of one. In fact, we didn't get a chance one way for the cutaway, but that, that was a complete interrupt and <laughs> no play on that first down wasn't it no he missed the snapper I, I think he missed the snap and just tried to get what he could get on the play Travis Miner back healthy and uh, they need him in the running game Marvin Menace a sophomore out of Miami comes into the lineup at wide receiver third down Mark Rick the offensive coordinator on the left side of your screen and they need to take it to the 36 and a half yard line to keep this drive going. Seminoles are three of three on third down conversions. There's Miner. And that's what he does best. And you look at that number and you say, hey, <laughs> we've, we've seen a, a 28, now we see a 23. And of course, he came from the same high school as. Uh, Warwick Dunn. Warwick Dunn in Baton Rouge wore his number in high school, but he changed to 23 when he came to Florida State. But the same kind of back, you get it to him in the open field, and it's difficult on a linebacker. He, he makes you miss tackles, and Ron, that's, again, Chris Winky. You see it, the, the development of quarterback at North Carolina State. He forced some footballs. Now he looks for the uh, outlet receiver, Travis Miner, and gets a little short throw and picks up the first down. Eric Thomas comes out over the football. Gonna have to hurry on this one, and they're not gonna get it away. Gonna be a five-yard delay penalty, although the play has run, and the official was late getting the marker down. Yeah, they're gonna give them five yards, though. They're, they're not gonna get that. That definitely a penalty. Dead ball, delay, offense. The running back would like to have that whistle blow a little louder there, <laughs> well, so it didn't take that, any that was, hit. That was my point. Why <laughs> take the hit? You're going to lose the yardage. You know, Peter Warwick caught that touchdown pass earlier. There was a situation last night with the team playing coming from Tallahassee that one of the engines went out or had a malfunction on takeoff. Warwick, along with Jenikowski, grabbed their bags, and they said, we're not flying tonight, coach. They drove up here along with four other players. They said, no thanks. They would come by land. <laughs> really put 
make some noise right now as Morgan was the intended receiver and Winky was well off the mark on that throw. Well, Randy Etzel, the defensive coordinator, wants defensive players in the face of Chris Winky. They do not want to get him settling in a routine. They feel like if they can get him moving, there's Randy Etzel, the, that came from the Jacksonville Jaguars and put in a pro scheme here. He wants Chris Winky on the move. He wants those tackles, Bryson and Watson, getting up in the face and making Chris Winky move to his right or left. Five of eight, 91 yards for Chris Winky so far. Gonna have to hurry. Flag goes down. That's gonna be holding. Warwick is down there, and it is knocked away. That is a nice play by Clark. Tomorrow, Clark, the sophomore from Bradenton, but take a walk back. This is holding. Well, this is funny, Ron, because Jamara Clark, I'll, I'll finish it after the official makes this call and holding. Jamar Clark is a high school teammate of Peter Warwick, and the coaches were getting on him this week. They said, Peter Warwick's going to toast you, Jamar, and Jamar says, no, no, I'm ready for the challenge. He gets a chance here to defend his former quarterback. He was the wide receiver. Peter Warwick gets a little separation, but Jamar Clark comes in, closes, gets his hand on that football, and you talk about a big play for the home guys. <laughs> oh, my. He don't want that matchup too many times no, tonight, though. He doesn't want with the win. whole field in the, in the middle. Number one does not want the matchup <laughs> one on one with number nine, because somehow it would seem as though there are more than one number nine. Penalty pushes it back to the 14. Running hard, they're going to say he's out of bounds at the 25. Winky's pass complete to number 23, Travis Miner. College football fans, check out the ESPN game plan on pay per view. Get up to 10 extra games each week featuring the top conferences from all over the country. Now, to order, call DirecTV, Prime Star, Dish Network, or your local cable company and ask for the ESPN game plan. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Carson coming to you from Bobby Dodd Stadium, Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia. It is 7-7. You can see just about the midway point of this second quarter. Blitz off the corner. Dugans, and you could see that he stumbled for a moment. Well, they want interference on the Florida State sideline. All the coaches are asking for interference of Traveris Tillman. There was a little bumping going down the sideline, and uh, they're making their point with the officials, but uh, it's not going to be called. Mickey Andrews was saying, these are not my guys, but I'm pulling for them also. <laughs> I pull for the offense, even though I'm the defensive coordinator. <laughs> And he has that scowl on his face. <laughs> Clark is the deep man, and uh, Cottrell stands back to get his kick away from the 11. Not a good kick. Off the side of his foot. And is going to be touched dead by Florida State just inside the 30. So there's a commercial break. 45 yards on the punt. Tied at seven. We'll return. Now you can lease this new Sunfire for just $199 a month. A hot set of wheels with money left to burn. Sunfire. See it at your Pontiac dealer today. What I propose is that you let these people go and I'll take their place. To stop a reign of terror. The president wants to stop and there's only one way to do that. I am declaring a bit of martial law in this city. Two men are about to take. So you put tanks on the Brooklyn Bridge? Two different paths. I serve my country. Why don't you try serving yours? What if what they really want is for us to put soldiers on the street and shred the Constitution? We do that and they've already won. The Siege. Rated R. November 6th. Only in theaters.
Bly versus Peter Warwick, a DB versus receiver matchup doesn't get any better. North Carolina versus Florida State at 7.30 next Saturday on ESPN. This Heisman Classic moment is brought to you by the U.S. Postal Service. He never won a Heisman, never coached a Heisman Trophy winner. Rather, he was Heisman. John W. Heisman coached Georgia Tech for 16 seasons. He brought Tech their first national championship. John Heisman. Situation, first down and 10. Line of scrimmage. Georgia Tech has it at their own 29. Hamilton, first option that we've seen since we talked about the injury. And the pitch is dropped by Philip Rogers. Ron, he, he didn't run that option like he ran the earlier options. He kicked that ball out a little too quick. Let's take a look at the hits Joe Hamilton took early in the first quarter. Gets hit on the option here, spins down to the three-yard line, scrambles. That's where I thought he caught his knee up a little bit under. Underneath it, yeah. I think you're right, Mick. Clock runs with seven minutes and 45 seconds until half times. One pressure, seven hits is what he has taken. He doesn't look as crisp right now as he did early in the ball game. in there nicely but it's good for a short gain just across the 28 and Larry Beal what do you have for us hey Ron LSU and Mississippi State put this under the category of when it's going good it's going good bad snap Herb Tyler runs it down oh he's in trouble now well no he's not look for your good friend Kevin Falk touchdown Kevin's third 41 nothing LSU Larry that's called uh, sometimes the magic works and sometimes it doesn't and boy, when it's magic, and those folks in Baton Rouge, uh, they, they, they need that. Yeah, they were looking for a little magic. Pressure from the backside, going to be incomplete. And Jamal Reynolds, number 58, you could see him in the picture. Joe had no time to waste because Jamal was all over him. Silent player here in this first first half run is Ben Des White. Holding offense decline. Ronnie came into this ball game with 31 catches, eight touchdowns, averaging 25 yards per reception, has not caught a pass here in the first half. You see the average second of the NCAA. And George O'Leary knows he's tied at seven, but his football team, since that 18-play opening drive, really has not had a spark on offense. No, something's wrong. I don't know whether it's uh, Joe Hamilton, maybe a little tentative on that knee. Something's different than in the first part of the ball game. Williams had a 54-yard kick, and this second one may be further. Good heavens. Feaster all the way back to the nine-yard line. Oh, that is a heck of a job. Now, it, Florida State stood to get really good field position, and he has just changed the field. 59 yards on the kick and four on the return. We'll be right back. Florida should encourage citizens to protect sensitive lands from development, but homeowners should not be forced to pay double taxes. And government should not put a muzzle on citizens to stop them from talking to elected leaders. Voting yes for revision number 10 on election day saves precious lands from development, lifts the burden of double taxation off citizens' backs, and guarantees that citizens won't be muzzled. Vote for fairness. Yes on revision 10. I got an eye for talent. I spotted these Kellys over at Big Ten Tires. They've got everything I look for in a tire, including long mileage. Going the distance means everything. Huh. See what I mean? I've discovered some 
pretty great names in my day. Like Kelly's from Big Ten Tires. And whoever that guy is. <laughs> Fighting Olsen. You're right. You're Fighting right. Olsen? Well, in 83, we adopted Merlin Olsen as our mascot. But then, we got sued by Merlin Olsen. NFL Countdown, Sundays at 11, Mondays at 6.30 on ESPN. Sometimes during a game, you can work up a pretty good appetite. How are you doing? One dog. One mustard? Please. Thanks, Matt. You bet. Hey, can we get some fries in the penalty box? We're tied at 7, 6.36 left until halftime, and we've just been told that Charlie Rogers, the fine tailback slash wide receiver for Georgia Tech, has been taken to the locker room to have x-rays on his shoulder. We'll get your report as soon as we can. Out of the shotgun, here's Miner. Miner's going to take it out to around at the 28-yard line. Robertson makes the stop, but that's enough for the first down. Well, tomorrow afternoon at 1 Eastern, the final round coverage of the National Car Rental Golf Classic from Walt Disney World Resort. Davis Love, the third, has taken a three-shot lead after a seven-under 65 today. A defending champion, David Duvall, but he's six strokes off the pace, now an eight-under for the tournament. One o'clock tomorrow. Ron, I have a feeling that Peter Warwick's going to become a big part of this series for Florida State. They've got to get him the football because that's the problem with Georgia Tech matching up to Peter Ward. Play clock is down to three. Got it away. Pumping. Ball is loose and picked up by Georgia Tech and then dropped. And Florida State will get it back. Maybe too much attention to trying to score yeah, boy, a lot rather of, than just fall in. A lot of coaches say just fall on the football, but now the new rules that have come into the fact that now you can pick it up and carry it on into the end zone. Uh, people, players, defensive players want to pick it up and carry it in, but have a chance to fall on that football and give your team the ball. Travis Miner saved the day. Andy Josephson caused the ball to be loose. Ron, this is a dangerous situation here for Florida State. They like to hang this one up here. This is the, the long ball they like to throw. Travis Miner glides along and is going to be tackled just short of the 20. The Georgia Tech streak of fumble recoveries return for a touchdown really is an obscure uh, NCAA record as, as you're going to find. But they do a great job of stripping the ball. And what they tell us is actually they work hard on picking up the ball and scoring. But as you made the point, it hurt them right there because they could have had the football inside the 20-yard line. Any doubt you need to fall on the football. But they do practice stripping the ball in practice. Anytime a receiver catches a football or running back, try to strip it. Third down. They need to take it out to the 38 to keep this drive going. Morgan caught it. Did he trap it? No. They're going to say it was a catch. Short of the first down. Well, they're keeping Chris Winkie on the move. Oh, the defensive front four of Georgia Tech won't let him settle down and set up the throw. Playbrooks that time with some heavy pressure on Winkie. Number 47, Keith in the punt. All set up, Ron by what you talked about, the great punt by Rodney Williams. Fast one is back deep since Charlie Rogers is injured. And Cottrell waits for the snap, gets his boot away. This is much better. Spiral's going to turn over. Return from the 17 by Fastwood. Fifteen Eastern at ESPN. This is Sunday Night Football. Doug Flutie with the start again this week as the Buffalo Bills take on the Carolina Panthers. Then on ABC's Monday Night Football, Cordell Stewart and the Pittsburgh Steelers take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Eight o'clock. ESPN and ABC exclusive homes of prime time NFL football.
Joe Burns with the big opening, and it's going to be an 11-yard pickup between the tackles before Theon Rackley finally got it. Well, a nice job there by Brent Key and John Carmen and Russell Matt Bay and Craig Page, the center, of opening up a hole in the front four of Florida State. Burns, a freshman of Thomasville, Georgia. This time to the 42. Larry Smith wraps him up. Right now, Florida State is lining up defensively as though they're not worried about the pass and they're going to stop any kind of run. That time, the deepest man in the secondary was six and a half yards from the line of scrimmage. Well, they feel now, Ron, after playing for a quarter and a half, uh, that they feel like they can match up and press these receivers, that they feel very comfortable that they can stop them with press coverage. And play Hamilton ahead immediately at the line of scrimmage and knocked down Joe by Hamilton number 55 Ryan Allen. He just does not look the same on the option here in the second quarter. Not as quick a delivery to the defensive end. He's not as quick to get to him. Third and six from the 41. And there's Ro Roland Seymour and Brian Allen doing a nice job on the option. Georgia Tech still has two timeouts too, Ron. Mike Sheridan, number 17, comes in at wide receiver. He will go to the top of your screen. Senior out of Massapequa, New York. And a strained knee missed the first two games. He only has five catches this year. Ball almost intercepted by Brian Allen. Whoa. White is who he wanted. Yeah. Well, you talked about Sheridan coming into the ball game, and I think they were trying to get him underneath or go to Des White, and the linebacker for Florida State collisions the motion man. Now watch Sheridan come in motion right here, and he's going to try to cross the face, but there's the collision right there that the linebacker does not let him across his face. So now he has to go outside and almost gets it picked off by Brian Allen. Williams kicking away to Peter Warren. Good coverage kick. Very high. Warren from the five-yard line. Flag comes down. And Warwick is going to be tackled at the 18. Chris Edwards defensively. 54 yards in this one. So he's had a 54, a 59, and a 54. I'll tell you, the young man's been a weapon. Oh, he has. I mean, he gets so much height on the football. We had him in the North Carolina game when he tried to yeah. fake. He was the holder. <laughs> George O'Leary was not real happy with him that night. And he no longer holds. <laughs> well, a block in the back, so Florida State is going to take this one over very deep in their own territory. Tied at seven, we have 142 left in this first half. And if you just joined us, what a strange opening. 18 play, 80 yard drive by Georgia Tech and then Florida State came right back with a 12 play 82 yard drive that was the entire first quarter and then nothing since then no they both defenses have taken over but penalties too Ron they put themselves in the holes on offense the numbers on Winky one touchdown seven of eleven there is Georgia Tech not looking for the pass they're up there to play the run and Matt Miller number 48 off the bottom of the stack well you talked about the problems with the plane Bobby Bowden's son quitting at Auburn all the distractions that happened to a football team may be taking a little bit of toll on Florida State here early in the ball game now they had that nice drive everything settled down uh, but you don't know the results of those distractions. Your meetings are, are messed up last night because you got players coming in the van. A lot of things take place on Friday night that are very important in a football game. Second down and eight. Miner bounces it out. And Miner will pick up the first down as he takes it out across the 20. Number 23, Travis Miner on the carry. And let's check in with Larry Beal. Larry? All right, Ron, coming up on the Buick Halftime Report, a couple of significant surprises in the top 25. 
We'll check in with the Auburn Tigers' life after Terry Bowden bows out, and the game day gang is in Atlanta. It's all coming up at the half. Okay, Larry, we have a timeout here at Grandfield. We'll take it with them. 51 seconds until halftime. Tied at seven. You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. The fundamental things apply. As time. Bow goes jet seductively by. smooth. Timeless, full you vineyard wines. Fall in love with BV. Every challenge for every step you take in life, there's GE, a financial partner you can trust. Take advantage of our expertise in insurance and investments and get the innovation you've come to expect. So think of GE when you think of insurance and investments for every step you take. will make the tackle well I think I think Bobby Bowden and his staff were going to kill it and they were going to the locker room but Travis Miner won't let him because he gets the big yardage and uh, then makes that screen pass well here's the record Charlie Ward had it 160 straight without an interception so Winky after a six intercept game talk about writing one so Florida State has called a timeout to stop the clock 36 ticks left until the halftime and we'll take it with them. Their dream started early. All the best of ACC football are going south for the winter. To Miami, the FedEx Orange Bowl. This is the year to go bowling with your team. Watch their dreams come true with ACC football. The Georgia Institute of Technology is a campus steeped in tradition, Heisman and Dodd, technology and teaching, academic rigor and practical relevance. Georgia Tech now stands on the threshold of a new era, an era of technological opportunity and national prominence in the fields that will shape the world of tomorrow, the traditions of the past, the opportunities of the future. The new era begins now at Georgia Tech. So we're tied at seven with 36 ticks left on the clock until halftime. And, you know, Janikowski, 56 yards is his longest, but he was doing it more than 60 in pregame. Ron, I think all this is the effect of Travis Miner. He wouldn't let Bobby Bowden take it to the locker room. He made a couple big plays, and now they have a chance to score. Here comes the pressure. Winky flat goes down. It's going to be holding. And now Winky is tackled. 27 seconds, and the clock is stopped as Tarplin is the man. But from where this one was thrown, it's going to be offensive holding against Florida State. And Mike, look where that marker yeah. is. 10 yards from there, they're going to be back to the 25-yard line. I was going to line. say, now they'll kill it. Ross Brandon is going to get called for holding. And I believe it was against Justin Robertson, who... who and, Chris Winky had moved up in the pocket, but this is going to be a big time penalty. Does it happen almost? Face mask oh. on the offense, on the blocker, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Mm. Wow, and this flag was thrown about eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. 
right here number 76 is going to get the call yeah you can yeah. see he took him down with the face mask and the referee who is the deep man behind the quarterback is the one who tossed the marker this flag sends it all the way back to the 20. now you either kill and run or just throw it up for peter warwick penalty yards florida state eight for 75 yards and we got another half to go <laughs> This is right in the heart behind them and also to the side of the student section of Georgia Tech. And that's the reason these defensive players are asking their supporters to stand up and make some noise. Minor. Tackled after a gain of one and we are at halftime. standing and they are cheering here in Atlanta. Halftime with our score Georgia Tech 7 and Florida State 7. Now with the Buick Halftime Report, let's rejoin Larry Beal. Larry. All right, thank you, Ron. Ricky Williams, his run through the record books, up the charts on hold for a moment. There is Ricky, the Longhorn star, hobbling off the field against Baylor just moments ago. Texas did just boot a field goal as they're about to head to halftime and they lead it 8 to 7. No contest between Mississippi State and LSU. Wow. In Death Valley, 41 to nothing. The Tigers getting well. Coming up, T. Martin trying to keep Tennessee unbeaten. Virginia trying to bounce back from a heartbreak. And the game day gang, Lee Corso auditioning for the Barbara Eden role in the sequel to I Dream of Jeannie, I think. For your pleasure, Senator. And the press is behind that bus. Oh, thank you. It's amazing how profitable a worldwide hotel chain or any business becomes when it unleashes its most powerful weapon, information. You like the Paris papers and steak tartare for cool cool. Oh, Coco, I know. Thank you. The EMC effect. It's not bad for tips, either. track design. The Wide Track Grand Prix Sports Sedan provides better cornering and control. When you're out for a bite, the Wide Track Grand Prix by Pontiac. Wider is better. What happens when the chickens get into the tequila? Tequila Lime Chicken, only at Applebee's. Tangy tequila lime marinated chicken on a bed of crunchy tortillas, then smothered in cheese. There are other tastes of the great Southwest, too, like our Santa Fe quesadilla combo and Southwestern sirloin. Seven new lunch and dinner favorites here for a limited time. So don't be chicken. You belong at Applebee's. This halftime report is brought to you by the new Regal GS by Buick, official car of the supercharged tram league. Well, welcome to the Buick Halftime Report. I'm Larry Beal. Start out with a traditional SEC rivalry, Alabama and Tennessee. Now, for years, the Crimson Tide dominated things. At one point during that series, Alabama had won 11 in a row, but the tables have turned. The Vols now in the driver's seat, having won the last three. Sean Alexander off and running, 34 yards for the touchdown late in the third quarter. Bama gets the two-point conversion. They're down 14-11. But on the ensuing kickoff, Peerless Price. And this is apparently why they named him Peerless. Aloha! 100 yards as Tennessee remains unbeaten, a 35-18 victory. They are now 6-0. T. Martin on the day, 10 of 14, 117 yards passing, also a couple of touchdowns rushing. Sean Alexander ran for 132 and the touchdown in a losing cause. Out west, UCLA and California, the Bruins trying to keep their winning streak going. Fourth quarter, Jermaine Lewis, halfback pass to John Dubrovic. 
UCLA. And a tight one with Cal. They struggled. The Bears have a good defense, 28-16. So the Bruins have now won 16 in a row. Cade McNown throws for 182 and two touchdowns. The Bruins upping their record to a perfect 6-0. Also trying to stay unbeaten, Kansas State against Iowa State. Michael Bishop, oh, beautiful touch and a beautiful look to Darnell McDonald. Kansas State up 21 to nothing on the Cyclones. Still in the second quarter, Bishop, oh, all kinds of time. Pump fake dancing around left, right, and hits Gavin Perez, who takes it in. Then he's got some work to do. Nice down field block also Kansas State led 28 to nothing and they go on to win it 52 to 7 the Wildcats have won 15 in a row Eric Hickson runs for 117 and a touch he's the new all-time leading rusher in school history Texas A&M Texas Tech Randy McCallum throwing to Dante Hall breaks away down to the Tech five-yard line led to a one-yard touchdown run by Hall Aggies were leading 14 to 10 Fourth quarter, 17-10. Donnie Hart about to be involved with some controversy. Throw into the end zone. Hart makes the catch, but they rule him out of bounds. No touchdown for Tech. Next play, it's fourth down. Peters with the throw. And Derek Doris can't make the catch. Texas A&M holds on to win it. 17 to 10. The Aggies improved to 7 and 1. Now think about this. If not for their loss to Florida State to start the season, A&M would be in the national title chase. Paul held the 67 yards and that one touchdown. West Virginia and Miami. Don Nealon and the Mountaineers facing the Canes. West Virginia down 17-14. Mark Bolger to Corey Ivey. And West Virginia is up 21 to 17. Miami down by four in the fourth quarter. Late going. Scott Covington finds Darrell Jones for the touchdown. Miami up 34-31. One last chance for the Mountaineers. Jay Taylor for the tie from 53. No good. Just missed it. And the Canes go into Mountaineer country and pull out the victory 34-31. A Jaron James ran for 162 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Also caught a TD pass. Bulger throws for 380 and three touches but cannot get it done. NC State and Virginia. George Welch, after the loss last week, said he's getting old and crotchety. Not happy. This won't make him any happier. Ray Robinson. He is God. That was in the first quarter. 88-yard touchdown run, and NC State is leading it 7 to nothing. Third quarter. Virginia down 13-9, first and goal. T.J. Thomas Jones. He'd run for 200 yards in consecutive games. Top nine-yard run there. That was his second touchdown of the game. And the Cavs do win at 23-13, but a significant loss for the Cavaliers. Anthony Poindexter out for the season with a torn ACL in his left knee. We're coming back with more of the Buick Halftime Report. Okay, when it comes to the weekend, we figure it's time for kicking back. Yeah, right. Now there's a car that helps your supercharged family take leisure to a new extreme. The supercharged Regal GS. Besides having more standard safety features than any car in its class, Regal also has room for five very supercharged people. And now during Buick's fall collection event, save over $3,000 in average finance savings with 0.9 financing. Regal GS by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. the scorching plains of the Serengeti or the hot lights of Atlantic City. Once you see the spots, it's already too late. This Halloween, the hottest costume is going to have spots. Nassim Hamed, only on HBO. The more you do something, the better you get. State Farm's been settling car insurance claims for over 75 years. Millions of them. We've come up with a system that works so well that more drivers trust State Farm than all those cut-rate insurers put together. You're buying into that promise that we're going to be there to take care of you when the claim happens. Every day, State Farm handles over 30,000 claims. It's a practice-makes-perfect thing. That's the reason the competition doesn't stand a chance. Welcome back to the Buick Halftime Report. 
Well, this is day one for the Auburn Tigers' life after Terry Bowden. Bowden abruptly resigning in the middle of the season yesterday with a 1-5 and five record. Lots of reports in the media circulating about what would happen to him at the end of the season that he might likely be fired. So he decided to pull the plug himself. Well, today, Auburn in action against Louisiana Tech. And there is the man taking the place of Terry Bowden. Bill Oliver watching from the press box. Gabe Gross, screen pass to Michael Burks, weaving his way through the defense. And he goes all the way on a 30-yard touchdown. Auburn does win 32-17. Gabe Gross ran for two, threw for one. Auburn getting their first win in four weeks. Georgia and Kentucky, wild game, third quarter. Quincy Carter with his team down 17-14, throwing deep to Tony Small for the touchdown. Bulldogs take a 21-17 lead in this battle of cats and dogs. Georgia up 28-26, late fourth quarter. Fumble by Ronnie Bradley. And the Cats recover. Oh, this could be costly. But setting up for the game-winning field goal, the holder, Matt Mummy, the coach's son, can't do anything with a bad snap that hit him in the hip. Georgia swarms him. Jim Donnan's Bulldogs seal the deal. 28-26. Both Tim Couch and Quincy Carter threw for two touchdowns. Kentucky actually outgained Georgia 530 yards to 342, but they still lose the game. Missouri and Nebraska. It's a fumble. Corey Buckalter can't hang on to the pitch. Steve Erickson for the Tigers going 41 yards for the touchdown. Extra point, no good. Missouri leading 6-3. Remember, these two teams went to overtime last year. Monte Cristo off the bench. The count of Monte Cristo, former walk-on quarterback. Nebraska takes a 20-13 lead. Four seconds left. Desperation time. Corby Jones trying to make something happen. Find somebody. No. Down he goes. Sacked on the play. And Larry Smith, frustration again against Nebraska as the Huskers hang on for a 2013 victory, make it 47 straight home field W's for Nebraska. Monte Cristo, the hero off the bench in replace of Bobby Newcomb with a couple of touchdowns. Corby Jones held the minus two yards rushing for the game. Wisconsin whipped Iowa 31-0. Great Dane, Ron Dane, 39 carries, 164 yards, and a touchdown. Ohio State, number one in the land, no problem with Northwestern. 36-10 as Joe Germain with his third straight 300-yard game, three touchdowns passing as well. Notre Dame and Army, the underdogs from Army, hoping to break a 13-game, or rather 11-game losing streak against the Irish. Jarius Jackson to Bobby Brown, reaching for the goal line. Fumbles the ball. Malcolm Johnson pounces on it for the score. 17-10 Irish. Early fourth quarter. Craig Stucker. He stuck this one right up the middle to tie it up at 17. Just over a minute left. Jim Sanson from 48 to win it for the Irish. And he does. 2017, but much, much closer game than you would expect with Army and Notre Dame hooking up. Osprey Denson ran for 88 yards and a touch. And what a comeback for Navy. 22-point turnaround as they beat Boston College 32-31 to despite 186 yards and two touchdowns from Mike Cloud. In our game, up and over, Phil Rogers. Remember when I had hops like that? The game day gang is coming up next. Kid's got an arm. I know. I'm a scout. I got an eye for talent. I spotted these Kellys over at Big Ten Tires. They've got everything I look for in a tire, including long mileage. Going the distance means everything. <laughs> See what I mean? I've discovered some pretty great names in my day. My Kelly's from Big Ten Tires. And whoever that guy is. <laughs> look, it's good about it! Okay, now let me help you all a little bit. Now I want you to tackle the guy. When he comes down the field with the ball, I want you to tackle him. Coach, are you sure you're in the right place? Well, I might not be in the right place, but I know where to find my next field goal kicker. Capital Eurocar, Tallahassee's only authorized dealer for Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and Porsche. <laughs> oh yeah, and Volkswagen too. Welcome back to Atlanta. A pair of touchdown drives that consume the entire first quarter. Seminoles and Yellow Jackets are tied at seven. First follow along with Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet. 
Tech has taken a fumble back for a touchdown, five consecutive games, but it was a couple fumble recoveries they could have, should have made, I think, were the biggest plays of this first half. That's, That's why we're talking. Oh, they, could, they were right there. They could have picked that up and gone. I think there were a few more plays that were a little bit bigger. It was the opening drive for Georgia Tech. A lot of pressure on them. Would they keep it close? And they came out with some outstanding play calling. The drive took up nine and a half minutes, 18 plays. The important thing was they were five of five on third downs. Here on third and 14, they wouldn't have made it. But defensive holding against Florida State, and they just kept going and kept going. As I said, eight of nine and a half minutes. Finally, Phillip Rogers, short, up and over, gets a nine on the Richter scale. The most important thing about that drive is it kept the team confident. I think they gained a lot of confidence thinking they could win this football game after that drive. you got to give the offensive coordinator from Georgia Tech, Ralph Friedgen, a lot of credit on that drive. He's the one that called the plays. Remember, they kept them off balance and did a great job. Also an interesting fact here. Florida State has allowed only 28 points in the seven games this year in the second half. So Georgia Tech's got to come out with some more action like that to win this football game. A lot of appearances by Mr. Hankey. Eight penalties yeah. for the Seminoles in the first half. You're not in love with their game well, plan. Are you kidding me? If you're a Florida State plan, it stinks. There's, there's too much helter skelter, too much winky, too much not balanced, too much everything. It reminds me exactly of North Carolina State and Kirk. If they don't change that thing at halftime, they're going to lose this football game. I'm going to give credit to Georgia Tech and their defense because they're doing a great job with their defensive game plan as well. They're using a stack defense, keeping everything vanilla up front, a nice soft cover two behind it. They're still getting pressure on Chris Wenke, and because they're in zone defense, they're preventing the big play from Peter Warwick, except for that one where he got out. The Tech fans and players really beginning to believe should set up as a fairly interesting second half as the halftime show continues here in Atlanta. Let's send it back to Larry. All right, thanks, guys. After having last week off, Ricky Williams, the Texas star running back, is back trying to run his way into the record books. Coming in today, needed 218 yards to catch and pass the man who's number two in all-time rushing, Charles White. Ricky and the Longhorns are running against Baylor. Second quarter, second and goal. Ricky Williams trying to get outside. And the Baylor Bears swarming. He can't get in. Next play, third and goal. Back to Ricky. And there's three guys. And that's the end of that play. Longhorns were forced to kick a field goal. Then just before the half, Ricky Williams limped to the sidelines. We've been checking, but we have not been able to confirm the extent of his injury. See if he comes out for the second half. Williams, 17 carries, 86 yards, and then he hobbled it off. Off its 8-7 Longhorns. Today's record setters, maybe you haven't heard of these guys. Brian Shea from Emporia State rushed for 235 yards today, has now run for more yardage than any player in college football history, going all the way back to the cavemen. Jerry Azuma, 1AA's rushing leader, Jeff Noisy, leader in pass catching. We're coming right back. Are rich people taller than the rest of us? Are their loved ones more deserving of an airbag? Was the sun created solely for their enjoyment? Are we the only car company that doesn't think so? Century by Buick. Full of amenities for under 20,000. Loaded for under 24. Century by Buick. A luxury car for everyone. Who else but Sonic could take a great American invention like the toaster and go at one better? Introducing new toaster sandwiches from Sonic. Served on Texas toast made fresh to order in your choice of bacon cheeseburger or chicken club. Both topped with crispy bacon and tangy smoked cheddar cheese. With a terrific taste of something totally different. They're the greatest thing since sliced toast. Drive in for a change at Sonic. This month, try our new chocolate-covered peanut butter shake made with Peter Pan peanut butter. It's the best NFL pregame show in the business. Chris Berman and Company, 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, Eastern Time on NFL Countdown. All the highlights at 7.30 Eastern on primetime. Then the Bills and Panthers at 8.15 Eastern. USC and Oregon. The Ducks trying to rebound from their loss last week to UCLA. Akili Smith, man, throwing a dart down the field to Tony Hartley. And he makes it into the end zone. 35-yard hookup 
for the touchdown. And it is now 10-10 in the third quarter. USC and Oregon. The Ducks have had problems with the Trojans in the past. Colorado and Kansas upset in the making, perhaps. The Jayhawks leading the 17th rank buffs. 10-7 at the break. We're at 7-7. Third quarter action coming up. Memorial Healthcare. Florida should encourage citizens to protect sensitive lands from development, but homeowners should not be forced to pay double taxes. And government should not put a muzzle on citizens to stop them from talking to elected leaders. Voting yes for revision number 10 on election day saves precious lands from development, lifts the burden of double taxation off citizens' backs, and guarantees that citizens won't be muzzled. Vote for fairness. Yes on revision 10. Hi, I'm Davis Gaines, and I've got a secret. It's nestled among rolling hills and towering pines, where Gothic archways for nearly a century and a half have welcomed young minds. It's where the spirit of service is measured against the spirit of history's heroes, and graduates go on to become governors, astronauts, and even the phantom of the opera on Broadway. This is Florida State University, my secret to success. 